Welcome back, this is the Clay Golem. We're in Foundry VTT version 12. We're in one of my testing worlds. I've got several now. <laughs> uh, I'm in one of those. We're going to be looking at an add-on today. Uh, and the add-on we're looking at is Combat Booster, Turn Marker, Recent Actions, and more. Um, it's just a nice little add-on that uh, just helps us organize and, and the flow of our combat. Now, you may be using a combat HUD or something like that. Um, this kind of, you could use this instead, or, or you can use it as well. Now, I've got up my module list because this is where we've been playing lot, with lots of different things, combat and stuff, in version 12. Um, we're going to be mostly looking at combat booster, um, but I will tell, try to point out exactly what combat booster is showing for us. So it's not doing this bit down at the bottom, this is something else. Um, you know, we're not going to worry about that. Let's start off by looking at the configuration settings for Combat Booster. So this gives us a good idea of what it's going to do as well. So it enables a turn marker. No, it says it in the title, turn marker. So it's going to highlight whose turn it is. And that could be really useful, make it really obvious. Now again, I've got the Combat's, Combat Carousel Tracker um, that I use which also tells me whose turn it is. So is this hugely useful? No, but maybe you don't like the carousel combat tracker. This will help you identify whose turn it is. Uh, you can also, if you want to, have an option on that will tell you whose turn it is going to be next. If you've got those wonderful players who are distracted and all over the place, at least they can see, oh, blimey, hang on a minute, I'm going to be next. I ought to be thinking about what I want to do. Um, you can change the images it's going to use for those if you want to. I'm leaving mine as the default. You can change their size and things. So these are just aesthetics that you can change if you want to, moving that marker place. So a lot of this is about that marker. So it looks like lots of options, but actually there aren't that many. Um, notice this talks about enabling the combat HUD. Okay. And this is about displaying recent actions in the token HUD. Uh, now that is something that I've got switched on. Um, and how many recent items. Again, I'll show you what that means. Bear in mind ours is set to four. Um, we've got this thing called body pile. So what this means is when when enemies die, it will automatically remove their corpses to a different place. So it helps clear the battlefield. You may or may not like that. Or turn it off if you don't like it. <laughs> uh, panning the camera to the next combatant. So that can be really useful, especially if you've got quite a large battlefield, a lot going on. So people might be zoomed in on their particular part of the battlefield and not paying attention to other stuff. It's going to make, certainly for the DM, much easier as well. It's going to pan you to where the action is. Auto select token on turn start. So whoever's turn it is, it will automatically select their token rather than you having to then go and click on it. That's really, really nice. Um, Ignore player tokens when auto-selecting, auto-enable uh, auto the HUD, so enable a token's HUD when it's their turn for the GM only. Okay, and I'll show you what that means. Um, let me save these changes. Let's start a combat. Ignore this figure up here at the moment. You'll see what that is in just a, just a few moments. I'm going to go to my chat, right-click and start my combat. So, of course, I've got my combat carousel tracker up here. Let me roll initiative for everybody, just to kick that off. There it all goes. Dooby dooby doo. Okay, I'm going to clear that. Now, as soon as I go to start combat, it has straight away panned to the uh, to the token whose go it is. And one of the options I've got about open the HUD, it's open this up straight away so that I can see some of the options around here, including at the bottom what um what of the previous actions they've used so let's uh target Soriman and i can attack directly from here so if i open this manticore under its features it's got bite claw and tail spike just when i was just checking it the only one that i used was this but i can click directly on this use its ability sure it's going to make that attack roll and again the automations and the animations are coming from other things what we're seeing is this turn marker is coming from this module. We're seeing these available bits down here as well. So that will make more sense as we move on. So we've missed there. Let's move on to the next person. Again, panned to the token whose go it is. It's 
automatically effectively done the right click for us to open this and we can see bow is already highlighted. This token is already selected. Sorryman is still targeted. I can just click bow. So for a DM, how fast is this to be able to whiz through? If you've got 20 goblins, you know, goblins are, are weak. Higher level parties, do you really want them to do fighting goblins? We tend to not use them. Just throw hordes of goblins at them. Let them butcher them. You know, not all the time, but every now and then. It's good fun. Okay, we've missed. Next player. Sorryman. So again, it's come to Sorryman. Um, now look, we've now got his quarter staff attack, his hand axe attack, shocking grasp, and catapult. So that's the last four things. Remember in the options, I could set how many I wanted to track. I don't think many people are going to want more than four, but it will include spells. So it will include range attacks, it will include spells, it will include melee attacks, whatever action it is you did before. So if you're using one of the combat hubs that has it all down here, you might not need to. So although it's Sorryman's go, I'm going to target this goblin here. In fact, I'm going to move him into combat range. I can just one right click again to open it and I can make my attack direct from here. Now the really good thing is just like as if I was doing it from the character sheet, if I shift left click that quarter staff, it's going to do that versatile attack. You'll see the fact it's a D8, not a D6. Um, and that goblin's just taken a spanking. Now the auto apply damage is coming from midi QOL. The blood splatter is coming from, uh, was it called splatter? <laughs> I think it was called splatter that we looked at previously. So that's not coming from this mod. But the turn marker, the panning to our characters, and the options of attacks we want to use is all coming from this mod. Now, for this goblin, I'm now in melee range. I am going to attack Sorryman back, but I don't have that there. So in this case, I'm going to open the character sheet and select his short sword. He's going to make that attack very badly. But now on this goblin, because that's a, one of the four most recent ones, it's right there. So next time, it, it's there. I haven't got to open character sheets. And with the automation of, of automatically applying damage, this is just, certainly for me as the DM, this is making this so much quicker. I've got one player with Sorryman, and then I've got four NPCs. It's like, oh, blimey, it's going to take ages to work my way through all the monsters. No, it's not. Bow attack. Misses. Mandukor. Oh, let's use his tail spike again. You see how quick this is. So it's keeping the flow. Gosh, that Mandukor is a rubbish shot. <laughs> it's keeping the flow uh, really nice and fast for the players. And yeah, I'm not messing around. Ooh. Oh, no, sorry, one's actually been hurt. Might have to rage. Uh, before I do that, I'm <laughs> not going to rage. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kill this goblin and show you the other feature. So hover over it and press T of course uh, my shift click on my quarter staff give that goblin a serious spanking and it's died but where's it gone it's not here anymore it has because I've got the pile bodies thing on it's actually piled him over here so if I move this you can see there's the dead goblin under that pile so it's just moved it. it's left the blood behind which is, comes from Splatter, not from this mod, um, but it's moved the corpse out of the way. So you might want that just to help keep the, the scene a little bit cleaner. Yep, I like the fact that it's leaving blood splatters behind. If I didn't have Splatter on, I'd probably want to leave the corpse, but it means at the end they can still go and loot those corpses. It's just moving them out of the way um, of us at the moment. Uh, sorry, I'm going to move up a bit more, and then we can go through, and let's, uh, let's just skip everybody's turn. That's so terrified. Sorryman, let's go back to Sorryman um, and uh, give this goblin a spanking. In fact, let's uh, shocking grasp him just for something different. Hmm, I'm sure that was a 19. <laughs> okay, fail to do that, but we can, again, we can just cheat and we can just pound this goblin. Now, notice these have changed order. So the left one is the most recent one that was used through to the least recent. I'm just going to keep spanking this goblin until he dies. Just, there we go. And again, that that body has moved. If I move Simon out of the way, both of these bodies have gone now. And they're both up here in this pile. Now, just going to pop them back to the options to show you how that bit works. Configure settings, of course. Um, body pile. When an NPC, i.e. a goblin, is defeated, move it to the body pile. 
it says top left corner by default and I'm assuming that's meaning all the way over here I'm assuming that's what it means I, I, I wouldn't want to use that myself um, place a token named pile anywhere to pile the bodies there instead so that is what this icon is here so I've got an actor I just called pile and it basically teleports the corpses to there so if I move it over here get Sorryman to give this goblin some uh, some love good job <laughs> That was useful, wasn't it? Boof. Now this other goblin's over here. So these two stayed over here, but this one's now moved over here. So you can designate exactly where you want those bodies to go. It's a really nice little module. Um, I think combined with some of the others, I think I would definitely use it. Um, I, I'm, I'm wary of turning my games into too much of a computer game. It's why I'm, I don't want to use um, 3D maps and things and isometric. I want to use automation to make my life easier as the DM and make the game smoother for my players, um, but I don't want to clod clutter it up too much. Uh, this is perfect for me. You know, I can right click here, they can see everything that they need to see, they've got the movement on here. Um, yeah, of course they can open their character sheet whenever they want to. And of course one, one of the things that you might be saying to your players at the moment is like, oh yeah, well you can drag your weapon. Uh, down and stick it on your macro bar so it's there or you might be using a combat HUD well I'm not going to because once they've used it once it's there and we know for a lot of characters they use the same attacks the same methods almost every single round especially martial characters it's like I hit him with my sword I hit him with my sword I hit him with my sword um, maybe they might have something else I, yeah it ain't going to be very often you open your character sheet, is it? <laughs> I really like it. Anyway, let me know what you think. If are you using this already, um, also let us know. Um, I have tried to make sure I've covered everything in this one because there's, every time I do one of these, I miss something. There's always somebody in the comments who says, did you know you can do? And it's like, no, I didn't. I wish I knew that beforehand. Always read the comments, guys. Always read them because you guys are you know more than I do in a lot of these. This is the first time I've really played with it today. Uh, I think it's great. I'm keeping this one. Anyway, thank you. You take care.